Praise the Lord. Welcome. Now, if you've noticed that what you have on the screen is my picture, you are absolutely right. So because today I will not be showing my face on the screen. So we have been talking about the story of the whole Bible. And we are looking at this picture that I'm using on the screen. And we said there is a story. There's a story of the whole Bible is an epic story. And this story has a beginning. By the reason of the fact that this is a material world, there is a beginning. And by the fact that this story has a beginning, there is also an end. Obviously, there is a middle bit to this story. And we've talked a little bit about story. And we are not going to go into all those today. Obviously, from the beginning to the middle of that story is what is covered for us in the Old Testament. And from the middle of that story to the end of that story is what is covered for us in the New Testament. And as we said, by the grace of God, we are going to be looking at various um, aspects of this picture that you are seeing in on the screen. There is a story. It's an epic story. And it's the story of God. And remember, the last time we read from Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 to 3, and we started digging into the beginning of the story. Remember what we said at the beginning of this story, the beginning of any story is very important. And the beginning of this epic story of the Bible is a story. It's a single story. That beginning is important. And that is what we read in Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. So let's read that. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And we started looking at this verse, digging into the beginning of this story. And one of the things that we realize is that creation marks the beginning of time. Okay, this was the beginning of time. Creation marks the beginning of times. The Bible simply confronted us with God. And that verse says, in the beginning, God, Elohim. I'm not going to go back into what we said about Elohim. Please, if you are not here, go back and listen to previous message. The Bible simply confronted us with God, Elohim, who was already there before the beginning of time. He was there before time began. He was there before creation. And we said this story is his story. He is the main character of this story. Now, we need to understand that the Bible did not try to argue or try to prove the existence of God. The Bible just simply says, in the beginning, God. And one of the things we saw is that God created the earth and the universe. He created the heaven and the earth. And we said God created in the form of bara, which was the word that was used in the original language of the Hebrew scripture, bara. And we broke into what that word means, bara. But please go back if you are not there. So God created the universe by the word of his mouth. And this is just a way of recapping what we said previously. Now, we need to now move on. And the next thing I want you to see, we're going to see today is that creation advertises God. Creation is God's billboard. The Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And we are beginning to see something about God as we break into this verse. In the beginning, Elohim, the great and mighty one, Bara, bring material things into existence by using non-material things, by using his power, by using his glory. And he spoke the universe into being. And he was there before time. He's outside time. He's outside creation. He is God. He is God that created everything. And he created the heavens and the earth. Therefore, creation is God's giant billboard. Creation is God's giant advertisement. Creation advertises God. Creation is God's billboard. And we are spending time in this Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 because the beginning of this story is very important. Remember what we said in previous teaching that when this story began in the scripture, we see God who is king.
king. If we see God who is king, okay, and the way we saw the kingship of God, the way we saw the glory of God, we read in Ecclesiastes that says that where the word of the king is, there's power. The one way that God demonstrated for us his kingship is that he created the universe. He created the heavens and the earth. So we are going to look at this universe that God created today by the grace of God. And it will tell us something about God, this God who is king. This is the heart of the story. This is the heart of the story, the epic story of the Bible, that God is king. And we saw the same thing in our Lord Jesus Christ in the New Testament, just like he did. Because it was God created all things by Christ Jesus. You need to remember that the God that, that stepped into the edge of nothingness and created the universe, that was Jesus. That was God the Son who created the universe. Because the Bible says God created all things by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. That was that is John chapter 1. Verse, I mean John chapter 1. Okay. So you we need to understand that creation advertises God. And what we see in Genesis chapter 1 is exactly what we see And when the Lord Jesus came. When he came as human being, he was also demonstrating creative power and commanding and things were, being, were, were brought into being. So let's read some scripture that will help us to understand this last sentence, this last phrase, that creation advertises God, that creation is God's billboard. Let's read Psalm 19 verses 1 and 2. The heavens proclaim the glory of God. The skies displays his craftsmanship. Day after day they continue to speak. Night after night they make him known. And this is confirming and establishing what we said that creation is God's giant billboard. That creation advertises the kingdom of God, the dominion of God, the kingship of God, the glory of God. Let's also read Psalm 33 verses 5 to 9. He loveth righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. He gathered the water of the sea together as an heap. He layeth up the depth in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spake, and it was done. He commanded and he stood fast. And this scripture is establishing to us that God is the one that created this universe. This universe. And as we look into this universe, we begin to see something of the kingship, of the kingdom, of the dominion, and of the glory of God. Let's still read a couple of scripture. Let's read Isaiah chapter 40 verse 12. Who had measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and meted out heaven with a span and comprehended the dust of the earth in the measure and weighed the mountain in a scale and the hill in a balance. He's, he's asking here because this is what God did. Isaiah chapter 48 verse 13. My hand, God is saying, also has laid the foundation of the earth and my right hand has spanned the heaven. When I call unto them, they stand up together. Obviously, the reason I'm reading this is because we live in a world now where some scientists or some science so-called want to argue that this whole thing that we are going to talk about today just came out of nothing, out of Big Bang. But the Bible established for us today that it was God that created it. Actually, many great scientists don't believe in Big Bang. Even many of them that are not Christian, many of them that don't believe in God. Let's read Romans chapter 1 because God knew about this. Romans chapter 1 verses 18 to 23. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. The truth is that they are so Many, many scientists today that know the truth. They know that the theory of evolution cannot explain this universe in which we live. I'm not going to go into the nuances and detail. There are so many good books out there that you can read. The truth is that scientists are being blind to their own science just because they don't want to admit that God exists because they don't want to face the alternative. There are some honest people that say, I don't believe in God. I'm an atheist, but I really don't believe that this whole thing came out by chance. So let's read that again, verse 19. Because that which may be known of God 
is manifested in them, for God has shown it unto them. For the invisible things of God from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Just look at the evidence. If somebody decides not to believe in God, it's not because of lack of evidence, it's because they've decided to reject him. Verse 21, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but they became vain in their imagination, and their foolish heart were darkened, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. The Bible says the fool says in his heart that there is no God. The truth is that a lot of these people are dishonest. A lot of these people are wicked. They know the truth, but they don't want to face the truth. They come against the evidences for God and they try to promote false evidences. In the mainstream media, they will not tell you the truth about God. They will not tell you that Isaac Newton, one of the fathers of science, was actually a Christian. That a whole lot of the men that we talk about today that were at the foundation of science, many, many of them were Christian. Many, many of them were believers in God. But no, they won't tell you that. They will just try to want to promote and propagate their paganism and their atheism just because they hate God. Every honest man and woman will know that when you look at the creation, it is very, very clear that there must be an intelligent designer. And we know that that being, if we can call him a being, is God. Again, there are so many honest atheists that say, you know what? We don't believe in God, but there must be an intelligent designer behind this intelligent design that we can see all around us, that we can see in the universe, that we can see in the stars and the galaxy all around us. This thing could not have come out of chance. This thing could not have come out of chaos. There must be an intelligent designer behind what we see. Indeed, when God created the universe, I will imagine that there was an explosion of power. The Big Bang is not the creator. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. God said, let there be and there was. The universe could not just have happened without God. The universe is stupendous and we are going to see the, the, the glory, the complexity, the impossibility of this universe that we are. Impossibility in the sense that it could not have happened by accident. The universe is incredible. The universe is mind-blowing. The universe is mind-boggling because the universe is an advertisement of God, is king dominion, is kingdom, is king dominion. And by the way, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Just for us to have, you know, a taster of the glory and the power of this God, because for those people that accept and receive him as God, they are going to witness his glory and power throughout eternity. Because this creation is big, is fast, is furious. Why did God create this marvelous thing? If God created this creation for man to live in, it is too big. In fact, it is far too big in a sense that I cannot even say. But if God just put this canvas out there just for us to see something of his kingdom, just for us to see something of his king dominion, then we understand that the universe is God's playground. So we are going to look at this big and fast and furious thing out there. We are going to look, just touch quite, just a little bit of the character of the universe around us so that we can see something of the glory of God. Science tells us that the universe is still expanding. What is it expanding into? Thousands and thousands of years ago when God said, let there be, that word is still carrying power. That is the power and the glory of the kingship of God. God is king. We are talking about the kingdom of God. And when we look at the universe, you need to understand that it is divided into groups so that we can grasp this. So we have the solar system. A solar system is a group of planets that are revolving around their light source. Obviously, in our own planet, 
our light source, our star, that is the light source, is the sun. And we have all the planets that are revolving around the, the sun. And that is our own solar system. Now, you have groups of solar system together, all other solar system with their own suns. When you group them together, then you form what we call galaxy. And then we have many, 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 many galaxies that are grouped together in what we call local groups. And we have many, 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 many local groups in the universe. Now, science tells us that there are more than 100 billion galaxies in the universe. Remember what we said about galaxy. Galaxies contain different solar systems. The biggest galaxy contains around 10 trillion stars and the smallest galaxy contains around 10 million stars. We are talking about the greatness of God and this is what some scientists want us to believe just came out just by chance. No, no, no. God created it. God designed it. For somebody said there are so many more stars out there than we have grain of sand on earth. Let's talk about size. <laughs> we are told that you could fit 500 moon inside the volume of the earth. This is mind-boggling. And you could fit about 1.3 million earth into the volume of the sun. There's a star in our own galaxy called Antares, and we are told that you, it, it could hold 64 million of our sun. <laughs> 64 million suns can fit into the volume of this one star in our galaxy. God is great. <laughs> and there are many stars in the universe that could easily swallow up several million stars the size of Phantaris. Listen to me. We are talking about God here. We are talking about his might. We are talking about his kingdom. This is what is involved in that first verse of this story. In the beginning, God. And we need to establish this foundation because it set the course for the story that comes after that. So this is talking about size, isn't it? Let's move on. Let's talk about distance. This thing is so big that the measurement of distance in the universe is what the speed of light in empty space. Light travel in space at the speed of 300,000 kilometers per second or 186,000 miles per second. So a light year is like the ruler you use to measure distance in space and one light year is the distance that life tr light travels in one year is the distance not in one second is the distance that life travel in, in a year that is one light year and that distance wait for it is 10 trillion kilometers 10 trillion kilometers or six trillions Miles, wow, that is telling you how big this thing is and it's still expanding. Let me give you an example. Our sun is about eight light minutes away. That is about 93 million miles. The next closest star to us in our own galaxy here is Alpha Centauri and is about 4.2 light years away from us. Our galaxy, the Milky Way, is 100,000 light years across. We are talking about God. We are talking about distance here so that we can see this is what God created. And remember, this is just a warming up. This is just the tip of the iceberg of the demonstration of the kingship, of the kingdom, of the king dominion of God. Because where the world of the king is, there is power. Now let's talk about movement. Wow. The art in which we are in is actually moving in three different directions at the same time. It's spinning on its own axis at this stupendous speed. 1,000 miles per hour, but at the same time, the Earth takes one year to orbit the Sun at the speed of 67,000 miles per hour, but that is not the end of it. The Earth is being carried across galaxy by the Sun at the speed of 67,000 miles per hour. So each year, we travel almost 21 billion miles across empty space. Remember where we started from? The heaven proclaimed is glory. You need to understand that the probability of life existing on earth is so fine true that it's impossible for this to happen by chance. Our planet Earth exists by God's design. The universe, our galaxy, our solar system, and the Earth-Moon double planet system are, are highly improbable by random chances. God created it. This could not have happened by chances. Our existence suggests 
divine intervention and design. And that is why Isaiah said in Isaiah chapter 40 verse 26, lift up your eyes on high and see who has created these things. Who brings out their host by number. He called them all by names. By the greatness of his might and the strength of his power, not one of them is missing. Can you understand that your God? That's why the Bible says, not a single strand of hair upon your hair will fall to the ground without the knowledge of God. God knows them by name. He is great. When we talk about the greatness and the might of God, we need to understand what we are seeing here. This creation actually is telling us something of the glory and the power of God. Let's finally read Psalm 147. Psalm 147 verse 3 to 5. He, God, heals the brokenhearted. He binds up their womb. He counts the number of the stars. He calls them by name. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding is infinite. His understanding is infinite. And this is the God that I'm bringing to you tonight, that we are talking about tonight. Remember, the reason we have done this is because this, is, this, this story is about God. It is about His kingdom. It's about his king dominion. And I want you to know that this God loves you. If you are listening to me tonight and you have not accepted him as your Lord and Savior, the time is short. Bow down today and accept the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. Okay? Accept him as your Lord and Savior. Invite him into your life. Believe in the cross of Jesus. He will come and he will save you. He will take the heart of stone and give you the heart of flesh. He will make you a son and a daughter. And at the end of the day, you will spend eternity with him in the new heaven and the new heart.